all her services and what she does. So if you could help with that, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the exhale goes on uh, today. I think Wednesday will be the last pickup day. Uh, so if they want something they need to tell you today, today's the last day. If you want them, take them up today. If you ordered, there's pickups today also at the, uh, at the welcome desk after the service. Kids Church after morning worship. Music team practice today at 445. I feel like I'm reading the kids. Service tonight, 6 o'clock. Come on out. Prayer meeting tomorrow night, 6 o'clock here at the church. I encourage you to be a part of that. And if you come and pray, I'd appreciate you praying for me. I uh, go see my accountant tomorrow to do my taxes. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Wednesday night Bible study on the book of Revelation. Man, this, is a, this study has been going, I don't know for anybody else, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this study so far. And so I encourage you to come out on Wednesday night for the adult Bible study. Of course, we have our kids' class, our youth class, and our young adult classes on Wednesday night. Uh, kids are still collecting uh, candy and prizes for the family day that's coming up uh, next week, next Saturday. So uh, if you've not been able to do that, if you'd like to help with that, see Beth. She can tell you what's needed and uh, what they're looking for. And, and uh, we encourage you to come out next Saturday for the family day here at the church from 11 to 2. Our youth are also uh, going to watch the movie I Can Only Imagine next Saturday night. If you got any questions about that, see Tabitha. She can tell you more about that. Next Sunday's Easter. You believe that? Three months already gone this year. It just seems like, man, it's like, whew, just flew. But, uh, man, it's, it's, it's all good. And uh, so we'll, we're going to have a good time of celebration next Sunday morning. Uh, Sunday evening, we're going to take some time to be with our families. So I encourage you to do that uh, next Sunday so uh, there'll be no PM service here. All right. Nursery members. Carmen and Michael's in there. I was wondering where they were. So they're in the nursery. All right. We got them. All right. Uh, quite a few things that we want to continue to pray for. Uh, Steph's mom, uh, grandmother rather, passed away um, yesterday. And uh, they're going to be uh, doing her funeral services. All of it will be in uh, Virginia, where she was from. So. Just be remembering Steph's family, her mom, and that God would just touch them and strengthen them through this time. We pray for God to have his way in that. Uh, Steve Delinger, continue to remember God to do a restoration in his life. Uh, Ronnie for his upcoming surgery. Amy, as she's continuing to recover, continue to pray for her, if you will. All these that are dealing with cancer, for Trudy and Frank and Jeff, um, for Lily, uh, for Mike McFarlane, all these that are dealing with cancer. Vernon Allen, dealing with cancer. Pray for them that the Lord would touch them. Continue to pray for Sister Debbie. Pray for her healing. She's got a, a scheduled uh, scheduled surgery, scheduled surgery uh, coming up the uh, 9th of May for her knee, and uh, we're praying for God to do a healing in her body. Uh, she's also got an, another knee that she's praying for and believing for God to touch her and minister her. Uh, so if you would remember that, if you will, uh, that God would touch her. Continue to remember Kim, Sister Jeanette's daughter Kim. That God would continue to touch her and minister her. Jackie Eves is dealing with MS, uh, so remember uh, Jackie, if you will. Uh, Paul Hauser, who, who's fallen and is dealing with a lot of pain in the neck. Paul did pass. Okay. All right. So remember, remember that family, if you will, uh, that God would touch, touch the Hauser family. Uh, continue to remember uh, William and Della and the family, uh, that God would touch and minister that family and uh, minister, minister that situation. God knows that need. I think Will uh, joined the Army. Uh, so uh, uh, pray for him that God will protect him and keep him safe. Uh, let's see. Stephen, you doing good? Got a good haircut. You're good. All right. Yeah, twinsies. Yeah. Me and Steve's got the same haircut, and me and Kayla's got on the same shirt and tie. So we, we, we have like-mindedness today. All right. Uh, continue to remember uh, Jerry and, and my dad for healing for them, uh, that God would touch them and minister to them. Uh, Sharon's 15 years old dealing with some numbness. Some remember of Sharon, if we will, Joe Aldry Holbrooks, who's uh, recovering from a stroke. Just remember Joe Aldry and Anna Fisher, who's dealing with some pregnancy issues. God's faithful. Well, we kind of knew that, didn't we? <laughs> Thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord he touched Anna and, and uh, everything's doing well. Yes, Stephen. Everything's good. 
Jesus. Annie's good. Annie Fisher's good. Last one on the list. Praise the Lord for that. Serenity. I want to pray for little Serenity, the, the, the grandbaby, that God will touch her and minister her. She's dealing with some issues with her ears. So remember serenity. All right. I think that's Amy coming in. I see the daughter anyway. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. She'll quick talk to her so we can see her. Come on. All right. God's good. Amen. 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 Good to see you all in the Lord's house. Let's stand and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer together. Um, I, I, a couple things uh, tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, uh, it's coming up in uh, a couple of weeks. A gentleman I spoke with yesterday, he asked me to not make it known because he hadn't even told his own church family, but uh, he, he said that he is uh, going to be tested in his prostate. They're not sure if he's got an enlarged prostate or he's dealing with prostate cancer. Uh, he said he would let me know in a couple of weeks what's going on with him. But uh, he did tell me yesterday, I, I saw him at a store. He said, I don't know why I'm telling you this. I've, I've, I'm not even told my family, but I feel led to tell you so you can pray. And uh, so I told him, I said, I'll, I'll have our family praying for you, uh, that God would touch and mention him. I, I, I'm going to leave it confidential right now. God knows who he is uh, because that's the way he asked me to leave it. But uh, God knows who he is and, and what he's dealing with. Uh, I got a busy day today, so I covet your prayers. I got this service this morning. I got a service at 3 o'clock this afternoon I'm speaking at, and then I'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock. So uh, that's life for me, so we're going to have a good time. But uh, I do covet your prayers that God would just uh, minister and move. It's amazing this conference I'm preaching at today. They told me I had 10 minutes to preach on the Gospel of John. 10 minutes is funny in itself, but then you give me a whole book to preach on? <laughs> they said, well, we're going to let you go last so the Holy Ghost can have his way. I said, now we're talking. <laughs> so be much in prayer for about that today, if you will. I met with him yesterday. Yes, sir. Everything went well with that meeting, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I talked to him a couple times yesterday, so praise the Lord for that. Thank God for his friendship. He's just a good friend of mine. Uh, praying for him that God would touch him and minister him. Amen. Amen. God's faithful. God's faithful. You know, it, it would be easy to look at this list and look at the cancers and the sufferings and all the things that people are dealing with, and it would be very easy to just get down. But when you know the God that you're calling on hears and answers, that he has whatever we have need of, he can supply it according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No matter what we're faced with, no matter what we're troubled with, we know that he's an ever-present help in a time of trouble. It would be easy to get in despair. It would be easy for the enemy to just take this and say, look how bad things are. Even though things may be bad, God's still good. He is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. Amen? So... As we pray this morning, I want us to pray in confidence. The confidence that we have is that we know He hears us and that He answers. We know that His ear is attentive to the prayer that's being made in this place. I know that when the righteous cry out, He said, I hear the righteous. And so as you pray today, pray with confidence. Pray with faith. Pray to know that God's hearing you and that God will move. And that while we're even asking, the Scripture said, the answer is on the way. So today, as we bring these needs and requests to God, we're, gonna, we're just going to ask God to move. We're going to ask God to heal. We're going to ask God to deliver. We're going to ask God to minister in a mighty way. And we're believing and trusting that God's going to do that. So let's pray together and ask God to have his way. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Once again, that you've given us to come to your house. We come with boldness, God, before your throne of grace. We come, God, humbly, knowing, Lord, that you are the God that hears and the God that answers. We bless your holy name. God, we honor you in this house today. Have your way in everything that's done. Today's a day of celebration. Today's a day that we recognize and commemorate the triumphant entry of, of you, Jesus, into, the, into Jerusalem. And God, we celebrate and we say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Father, we just recognize your presence in this room today. For your word is declared that where two or three are gathered in your name that you are in the midst of them. And so, God, we just humble ourselves in your presence under your mighty hand, God, that we may be exalted in due time. We know, God, that you hear 
We know that you heal. We know that you deliver. You save. You sanctify. You fill with your spirit. And so today, God, we come before your presence, God, acknowledging you as Lord and Savior. Acknowledge you as healer and deliverer, God. Acknowledging you as our way maker, Father. We bless your holy name today. You are worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. So every need that's been mentioned, those that are on our list, those that have been presented to us in the service, God, we know that you're capable and able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. And so, God, we bring them to you today. Father, we know that the answer doesn't lie in the worldly ways. It doesn't answer in material things. The answer is not in, in people, but God, our answer is in you. You are the answer to all our problems, all our circumstances, all our situations, all our questions. God, we honor you in this house today, and we exalt your holy name. God, we bless you, God. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Touch us as we go into this time of worship. Anoint everything that's done. Anoint our, our, our singers, our musicians, God. Use them in a mighty way. Bless those that are in the nursery today. Bless Pastor Ramos and the Hispanic ministry, God, as they minister today. God, what a, what a tremendous move of your spirit, God, we've been experiencing around here. And God, we don't want anything, anything to be different today. But God, just to experience your presence, experience your outpouring, I pray in the name of Jesus. Touch Beth and the kids team today, God, as they minister to our children. Use them, God, and, and manifest your glory and your presence in their life in an awesome way. God, we bless your holy name. Father, I love you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. You are worthy of it all. And we give you all the glory and the honor. Come on, somebody. Welcome the presence of the Lord into the house this morning. Come on. Welcome the presence of God into His house this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Take a moment. Shake a hand. Hug a neck. Welcome someone to the house of the Lord this morning. Come on and praise His name. Come on, come on and bless Him. 
come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Bless the Lord, Almighty ones. Come on, church. Bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all you His angels, and let all the earth sing forth His praises. Come on, no. come on, come on and bless Him. Come on and praise His name. Come on, come on and bless Him. He is holy. Come on, come on and bless Him. Come on and praise His name. Come on, come on and bless Him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Oh, for the Lord delights in showing mercy. I'm glad the Lord delights in showing mercy. Oh, for the Lord delights in showing mercy. Our Lord delights in showing mercy. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. King David was a dancer. On Mount Zion's hill, his wife looked down upon him and told him to be still. David said, hey woman, I'm not going to change. You didn't give this to me and you can't take it away. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. The Lord. Jesus told the people that wouldn't praise out loud that if we didn't praise him, the rocks would they cry out. I'll never let no mountain shout in my place. There ain't a rock that I know that can sing amazing grace. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Leap for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, leap for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, leap for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord Everybody ought to praise the Lord Jesus told the people that would praise out loud That if we didn't praise Him The rocks would they cry out I'll never let no mountain Shout in my place There ain't a rock that I know That can sing amazing grace Praise the Lord everybody Praise the Lord oh, Praise the Lord everybody Praise the Lord oh, Praise the Lord everybody Praise the Lord oh, said, Everybody ought to praise the Lord When I move my body When I move my when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. My praise is a weapon. 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 
And lay aside your doubt Get closer to the spot Where the glory is coming out Oh, praise the Lord, everybody Praise the Lord Oh, praise the Lord, everybody Praise the Lord Oh, praise the Lord, everybody Praise the Lord I said, now everybody, everybody ought to praise the Lord on, Shout for joy, everybody Praise the Lord oh, Shout for joy, everybody Praise the Lord oh, Shout for joy, everybody Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Jesus told the people that would praise out loud that if they didn't praise him, the rocks would be crying out. I'll never let no mountain shout in my place. There ain't a rock that I know that can sing amazing grace. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Oh, clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord. Shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll never let no rock shout in my place. Come on, I'll never let no rock shout in my place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Too many people trying to live through the, the neighbor on the chair. They're trying to live through what everybody else is doing. They're trying to get what... I don't know about you, but God has blessed me. God has blessed me. I can't let somebody out praise Him for me. I can't let somebody else praise Him in my place. i got to praise Him for myself. And I'm surely not going to let rocks come up and cry out in my place. Amen. Jesus told the people that wouldn't praise out loud that if we didn't praise him, the rocks would be cry out. I'll never let no mountain shout in my place. There ain't a rock that I know that can sing amazing grace. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands, everybody. Praise the Lord. Shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, now everybody ought to praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. He's worthy this morning. Yeah. Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Lord, I love you, my soul sings. In your presence, carried on your wings. I love you so much, Jesus, I love you so much, and how my soul longs for you, longs to worship you forever. Sing how my soul longs for you. How my soul longs for you, longs to worship you forever in your power, in your power. Tell him I give you my all. I lift my hands and my heart. My hands, I lift my heart. I lift my voice towards the heavens for you. Jesus, I pray you hear these praises this morning. Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, 
the praises star. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Sing, I love you so much. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so. the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great are you, Lord. Oh, come on, you know that. Sing it with us. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only so great great are you lord he is so great great are you lord for you give life you are love you bring light to my darkness you give hope and you restore every heart that is broken you give life sing that you are loved you bring light to the darkness you give hope and you restore Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord. Sing, it's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Sing, He's great. Great are you. One more time, tell him how great he is. Great are you, Lord. I have never known someone like you. You are so amazing and so true. Never would have dreamed that this could be. That the God of all the earth would dwell in me. You are so beautiful to me. You're the only God in whom I believe. In your presence I want to stay forever. 
Because when I'm with you, things get better and better. So I'll praise and lift you high. God of water, earth, and sky. God of glory, power, and might. You are holy. You are worthy. your name Jesus praise your name Jesus praise your name Jesus praise your name Jesus God you are worthy of all the praise all the glory all the honor God you are worthy today praise your holy name 
praise your holy name. We will praise you and lift you high. You are holy. You are worthy. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on, one more time. Give him a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Our kids can be dismissed at this time. And while they're being dismissed, if you'll turn with me to Luke chapter 19. Luke 19. We're going to start at the 28th verse. Luke 19. Praise the name of the Lord. What a God we serve. What a mighty God He is. Love Him so much. Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 28. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. It came to pass when he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, in the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter you will find a cold tide on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. If we're going to ask you, Why are you loosening it? Thus you shall say to him, Because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosening the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosening the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. And as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you, that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. I want to talk to you about this morning when rocks cry out. When rocks cry out. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me today. Give me the strength, the ability that I need for the next few moments to declare your word. God, I pray that we be a people of praise. That we be a people that worship. God, that, that, we do, that we do it unashamedly, Lord, that we're not concerned about what people may say or do or think about us, God, but God, that we would just go wholeheartedly into you to love you with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, everything that's within us, God, with all our being to seek after you. You said, God, that when we would seek for you with all our heart, that we would find you. God, I pray today that we would press in and, 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 and push our way into your presence, God, past all the, 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 the attacks of the enemy, past all the trials and the struggles, Past all the hurts and disappointments, God, just to press our way in through praise into your presence. For the Bible declares that you are enthroned upon the praises of your people. And God, that's where we want today. We want to praise you and exalt you in this house today in a way that you would come down and begin to minister and move in a mighty way. Father, I love you. I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Touch me today. Give me the strength, the ability, the courage, the boldness, God, to do what you have me to do. Hide me behind your cross, God. I don't care to be seen or heard. It's not about me. God, I want you to be lifted up, for if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you. And Father, we just pray that you be lifted up in this house today. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor for all that's done and accomplished. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to let no rock cry out for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our scripture text this morning actually gives a very beautiful account of the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem as a prophet. Uh, Zechariah tells us in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just in heaven, salvation lowly, riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So we see that many years before this, that Zechariah promises, prophesies of this coming of the Lord, how that Jesus would enter into Jerusalem. Deliverance day for the Jews had finally arrived, or so they thought. This is what they're rejoicing about. This is what they're praising and magnifying God about. Their king, their deliverer, was riding in to take his crown and set up his kingdom. They would overlook this lowly coat that he was riding on because the, 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 if, a, if a conqueror was coming in, he would have been riding in on a, on a horse. It would have been a triumphant entry. Kind of the way that he's going to come back the second time. He's coming back on a white horse. But this time he's riding on a lowly coat. And what he's saying is, I'm coming in peace. I'm not coming to try and stir up trouble. I'm not coming to try and stir up 
chaos, but I'm coming in peace. I'm coming humbly into this kingdom. I'm coming humbly into this place. And so they overlook it for that time. That Roman yoke that would soon be to be broken off of them. God's kingdom would be set up on earth and finally they'd have their position of authority. They finally come back into that place that God intended for them to, 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 to go into. Excitement charged the air all around them as their dreams and aspirations uh, uh, began to look like they would soon come true. This great conqueror named Jesus was in their midst. But they didn't realize that his conquest had to be in the spirit realm before he could set up his earthly kingdom one day. He came riding on that lowly coat that day. One day he'll, he'll return on that white horse arrayed in power and majesty and glory and all eyes will behold him. He'll rule with a rod of iron for a thousand years on the earth with justice and truth and righteousness. And if there ever was a praise service, this was it. If there was ever a time that they would come together and begin to magnify the name of the Lord, this was the time. As this procession moved on, the crowd began to grow. And, and, and the disciples, inspired by enthusiasm and, and, and caught up in the, in the moment, if you will, begin to sing songs and praise God and sing out loud praises to God. All of a sudden, the entire city was moved by, 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 as Jesus of Nazareth makes his soul stirring entry into the gates. They were praising him and magnifying him. And all of a sudden, here we see that these people, first of all, they had a reason to praise. They had a reason to praise God. They were praising Christ because he be they believed that he had come to free them from this Roman oppression and their rule. All their burdens and all their shame and all the reproach and all the misery that they had suffered at the hand of the Romans was now on the shoulders of the one that sat on the coat. We know that for anyone to really praise the Lord, some people got to have a reason. They gotta have a reason why to praise him. See, there's people that, that believe, these people believe that they really had a reason. Jesus was not misled or deceived by the shouts of the people. He knew them. He knew that they were praising him for many different reasons. Some of you come in here this morning and you've got your reasons why you showed up. You've got your reasons why you came. you got your reasons why you've lifted your hands, why you've shouted your praise. Every person in this room's got a different reason why you praise him. But Jesus will really receive that praise and he received the praises of those people no matter what the reason was but the same and the same note the same people that were shouting praises to him not many days later would be shouting crucify him come on now they, 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 listen, this is why we celebrate in this Passion Week. Because we're recognizing the, 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 the frailty of humanity. The, 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 the frivolous of humanity. The, 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 the wishy-washiness of humanity. How that in one moment they could praise Him. And the next moment they're ready to see Him crucified. Hardly anyone had the right reason to praise Him. They were mainly looking at it, what was for them. They were praising Jesus because they thought Jesus was going to set them free. They thought Jesus was coming in to, to destroy this Roman government. That Jesus was coming in as the Son of God. And, and, and hardly anybody had a right reason to praise Him. They, they were looking at it for what was from them. But Christ still didn't stop them. As a matter of fact, He accepted their praises. As we see in verse 40 of our text where He said, He said, I tell you that these should not keep silent. If they did, the stones would immediately cry out. Do we have a reason to praise God today? Oh yeah. They're, 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 these people were praising because of their hopes of escaping the physical bondage but they were in. But we've been given a spiritual freedom from Satan's oppressive rule in our minds and our spirits. Jesus said in John 8, 36, If the Son therefore sets you free, then you are free indeed. Listen, friend, we've got reason to praise the Lord today. We've got reason to magnify the name of the Lord. If you're free in the house of God, then you've got reason to praise Him. If there's anyone that's ever had a reason to praise God, it's the saints of today if anybody's ever had a reason to magnify the name of the Lord we've got reason to shout in the house of God today to magnify Jesus with all our hearts today no matter what your personal feeling is but we've got reason to praise Him because we live in a free country an opportunity to praise God without any worry uh, uh, other than some moron coming in here trying to shoot us out, but we, we ain't got to worry about somebody coming and arrest us. Listen, you got freedom and liberty to praise Him. 
There's people across this world today. They're celebrating this triumphant entry. They're celebrating this, this Palm Sunday, if you will. And there's some of them that are celebrating it at the risk of their life. They know that if they get caught worshiping, they could be put in prison or even worse, be killed. But yet they still praise Him. Can I just go on a rant here for just a moment? How dare we sit in a free country and hold our tongue when God's been so good to us? We ought to be the loudest people in all the world today shouting and praising and magnifying God. We ought to rend the heaven with our praise that God would come down and begin to manifest His presence and glory in our life. Hebrews 13, 15, the Bible said, Therefore by Him let us continue to offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Praise is out loud. Praise is a fruit of your lips. There are people that will think they're praising God internally. But the sacrifice of praise is opening up your mouth and praising and magnifying God. So people will say, why should we act like that? Why in the world do you act the way you do? Why in the world do you praise in the way you do? Well, I've got a few reasons here. Number one, I'm redeemed. Number one, I've been set free. I've been made a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a chosen generation. I'm part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I've been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. I've been justified. I've been sanctified. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I've I've got reason to praise Him. My name's written in the Lamb's book of life and I'm on my way to heaven and the journey's getting sweeter every day. I've got reason to praise and magnify the name of the Lord. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph and magnify the name of the Lord in His house this morning. Hallelujah. May Christ always feel welcome in our house. May Christ always feel welcome as we praise Him and magnify Him. May Christ come into this place and ride into the gates of this house and hear the praises of His people. Let us not be a people that we strain or would hold back. One thing that we need to recognize, we need to count our blessings. Count our blessings. That's great counsel. But sometimes we, we've got to recognize them first. It's hard to count something that you don't realize you got. There was a man that owned a, an estate, and he thought it was time to sell it. And so he called up a real estate agent and had him to come and do a listing for him. He said, I want you to put the advertisement together. I want to proofread it before you put it out there. The real estate agent got the advertisement together, the listing together, and came back and began to read it to the old man. After reading the old man said, would you read that one more time? He began to read it to him again. He said, you know what? That's exactly what I've been looking for. What he didn't appreciate is what he already had. Come on now. Some of us, we were always trying to find the better. And we only realized that we already got the best. Some of us don't really, we're looking for good when we've got great. We're looking for, oh, I'm telling you, friend, you better realize that what God's done in your life, it can't get any better than what He's already done. You better realize that what He's blessed you with is a blessing that's innumerable. What God has poured out on your life, you ought to open up your mouth and say, ain't no rock gonna shout for me. My God's brought me through. God's done it in my life and I'm gonna praise Him while I got the chance. Count your blessings. I, I got to find a reason to pray, man. I'm telling you right now, if I just begin to count the reasons and praise Him, we'd never get out of this place today. We might have to stay the rest of the week and begin to celebrate, celebrate Easter Sunday in the same clothes because we just sit here and keep on counting our blessings. I'm telling you, friend, God's been good to me. If I can't testify for nobody else, I'll tell you that God's been good to me. He's kept me in my right mind. He didn't let the devil kill me. He's held it all together. My marriage is strong. My kids are serving God. God's been been good to me. Everything's working for my good. God's been good to me. I don't have to sit here and beg you to praise Him. All you got to do is think of His goodness. And when you think of His goodness, it ought to make you want to shout. It ought to make you want to dance. It ought to make you want to praise the Lord because God's been good to me. If the devil had his chance, he'd have killed you this week. But you're here.
And the devil had his chance. He would have took you out this week, but you're still here. Come on now. Hallelujah. This is something to think about. I, as a prayer request, I forgot to mention this earlier. If you might have saw on the news early Saturday morning about 3 o'clock in the morning on 485 in Charlotte. A man went down the wrong direction on 485, struck another lady. He died in the accident. She died in the accident. About 8 o'clock Saturday morning, I got a phone call from Chris Preston. Y'all heard me mention his name. Just a year ago, he lost his mom to cancer. Her twin sister died from a stroke just a matter of months ago. And he called to tell me that the wrong way driver was his first cousin who was his best friend. Weeping and sobbing. He said, Joe, I don't know how much more of this I can take. This has been the roughest months of my life. To see my mom go, my aunt go, and now my cousin. He was on his way to the beach to spend time with Chris. And they were down there vacation a little bit. And he got killed on 485 going the wrong way. Listen, friend. God's been good to you. God's been good to you. I talked with Stephanie yesterday and she began to tell me about her grandmother. And she said, I don't understand the peace that I feel. I don't understand why God's doing what he's doing. He said, but I know where she's at and that's all that matters. Listen, friend, when you know that you know that you know and everything's all right between you and God, that's all that really matters, friend. Death won't scare you. You'll praise your way through that court of death right into the eternity with the glory of God. When you know that you know that you know that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life and that all is well between you and the Lord, you can't help but pray. Him. When the doctor tells you you're going to die, you say, glory to God, I'm getting promoted. I'm going to the other side. Everything's going to be all right. Why? Because you know God is for you. And if God is for you, nobody can be against you. you got to count your blessings. you got to start by asking God, open my eyes, God, so I can see how good you've been to me. You know, I, I think about Elisha and Gehazi. They were encompassed about by a great army. And they were down in a valley. When you're down in the valley, all you can see is your surroundings. Are you with me? All of a sudden, that servant looked up around the rim of that mountain cliff and saw all that number of, 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 of the army that was up against him, the Midianite army that was up against him. And he began to get fearful. Gags, I did. And Elisha prayed a prayer. He wasn't fretting. He wasn't sweating. He wasn't worried about it. But he said, God, open his eyes that he can see. I pray for this church today. God opened their eyes that they can see. What did he behold? He looked around the ridge of that mountain and all of a sudden that Midianite army didn't look so big anymore. You know why? Because surrounding the top of that mountain were chariots of fire and warriors of God that were encompassing that mountain and he began to declare them, they that be for us are more than that that be against us. I'm telling you, friend, God is on your side. God's going to see you through. You might be in a valley today, but go ahead and praise your way out of it. You might be going through a trial, but go ahead and praise your way out of it because God's been good to you. You got a right to praise Him. You got a reason to praise Him because they that are for you are more than they that be against you. It'll change your entire perspective when you begin to count and see. It'll change it because you're recognizing all that you have in Christ. It'll enable you to praise God for what you have. You see, not only do we have a reason to praise God, but they also had an environment to praise Him. Christ rode through verse 37. We see in verse 37 of Luke 19 that as He was drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. They, the, the, the whole city came out and was praising God with a strong voice as one. There's something contagious about praise. There's something exciting about praise. There, there's something about it when God's people come together and they begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Listen, David said in Psalm 100, beginning of verse 1, he said, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth 
endures to all generations. What are you saying, preacher? We got an environment to praise him. We've come together this morning and two or three are gathered in his name. And my Lord, do I feel his presence in the house of God today. We ought to praise him and magnify him. We ought to come in the door with a praise on our lips. We ought to come in thankful that God has kept us one more day. We ought to rejoice in the fact that God's on our side, that God is keeping us. Look, the Bible said that he inhabits the praises of his people. In Psalm 22, verse 3, he said, but God, you're holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. You inhabit the praises of Israel. Listen, friends, we are part of that spiritual Israel, if you will. We are a kingdom of God. We're the seed of Abraham. And when we rejoice and praise and magnify God, I'm telling you, God comes down and inhabits the praises of his people. One of the most effective tricks that the enemy has is that he steals the praise of the church. He steals the praise of the Christian. Remember, he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. He wants to steal your praise. Listen, a praising church is a powerful church. A powerful church, why? Because God inhabits or dwells in those praises. You want to see power? Begin to praise Him. You want to see victory? Begin to praise Him. You want to see healing? Begin to praise Him. Listen to me. The weaker the praise, the weaker the presence. But the stronger the praise, the stronger the presence. Why? Because God shows up. Our hearts open up to Him. And we become sensitive to His presence around us. Listen, it's an environment of praise. will always usher in the presence of God. Second Chronicles chapter 5. I know that in churches we have what we call ushers. And ushers have different functions within the church. Sometimes it's helping people to their seats. Sometimes it's dealing with issues within the, within the service so that the pastor doesn't have to worry about it. Sometimes it's watching the doors. Sometimes it's collecting the offers. The ushers have all types of, of functions, if you will. But can I submit to you today that every one of us are ushers? We are ushering in the presence of God. Listen, you, in your praise, it's almost as if you've got God by the hand and say, come on, let's go to church. In your praise, it's like saying, okay, God, I, I want you to know that you're welcome where I am. God, I want you to know that you're, you're lifted high. God, that you're magnified. God, because I'm justified and sanctified. God, I'm telling you, I just want to magnify your holy name. God, I want to make it bigger than any. But listen, friend, that's the beauty of ushering in the presence of God. If you could for just a moment, could you see yourself as an usher today? Second Chronicles chapter 5, the Bible said, Indeed it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praise and thank of the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministry because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Listen, friend, it's not on the preacher, it's not on the music, it rests on all of us to usher in the presence of God. We create that environment when you come into the house of God and you join together as one and you begin to magnify the name of the Lord. God says, I like that. I'm going down where they are. And the presence of God, listen, He could come in so strong that we fall prostrate in His presence that the minister can't even stand to minister. Why? Because the presence of God would fill the house. I'm telling you, there's power in praise. You want a powerful move of God? Sing Send up a powerful praise. You want to see a manifestation of His presence? Send up a powerful praise and watch God come down and manifest His glory in your life. In this particular passage, the atmosphere was filled with praise. The praise invited the presence of God and the presence of God filled the people. Praise should be on our lips as well as in our hearts. It doesn't happen all the time like we know. It doesn't happen all the time. But there are times that God moves in his power and glory in such a special way that we need to be open to the move of God. I, listen, I've been around this thing all my life. And there have been moments where I've just been swept away in the presence of God. And I could care less what time it was. I could care less what song they were singing. I could care less what preacher was in the pulpit. Get me in the presence of God. Let me feel and experience His presence. I'm telling you something, friend. When God's presence comes on, when God's presence begins to happen and take place, it ought to fuel us up to the point that it's not just on our lips, but also in our hearts. 
It's up to each one of us to provide the environment that the Holy Ghost feels welcome. You know, if you're, okay, God, if you're going to do it, you better hurry up and do it because I got somewhere I got to be. God's going to say, well, you're just going to do what you got to do. Come on now. You think God's going to move when we set him on a clock or put him on a calendar or tell him how quick he's got to do it so we can go? No, 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 no. God's ways are not our ways. Matter of fact, his timing is not even our time. Matter of fact, God is not even suspended by time. Listen, we are inhibited by time, but God Almighty is not bound by time. He is, he was, and he shall be. Oh, my Lord, I'm telling you, God is God, and he always will be God. He is omnipresent. In other words, he is at all points at all times. It doesn't matter. Listen, I know that we can't wrap our mind around that, but I believe that God's right back where he was when he said, let it be. He's right here today, standing in our present, our midst, and he's waiting on us to get to where he's at. I don't think God's suspended by time. I think that God Almighty, listen, that means to me that if I praise him today, he's already working my tomorrow out. Come on now. I don't have to worry about tomorrow because God's already there paving the way before me because he's my way maker. I might have to walk in a dark place tomorrow, but the darkness will be light all about me because God is going to be there for me. He's with me now. He's already preparing my tomorrow. He's got my next week worked out, my next month, my next year. God's already constructed it all for me, and he's worthy of praise. So there's a reason to praise. There's an environment to praise. But they also had the approval. The approval. Jesus gave them approval, verses 39 and 40. And some of the Pharisees called to him and said, from the teacher from the crown, said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he has said, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Think about this. The praises begin to rise. The noise in that crowd began to get stronger and stronger. God in the flesh was coming into their presence. But there was a group of people that began to get nervous that were assembled with the crowd. You know what's amazing? It, it, it wasn't the Romans who feared this new king. It wasn't demon-possessed people. It, it wasn't hardened sinners. No, it was the religious folks. It was the religious Pharisees who came with the words, rebuke your disciples. You see, I, I look at this and I wonder to myself, why in the world were these religious people so nervous and fearful of what was going on? Could, could it be that they saw this Roman garrison of troops in full view poised for action against any disloyal Jews? No, I don't think that's it. But perhaps they, they were nervous of a crackdown that could come from the Romans and they get caught up in it. I, I don't think that was it. I believe what was happening inside of this religious crowd was they realized that power was being stripped away from them by the people. Because now the people begin to put things in proper perspective. See, religious people get nervous. When God is exalted. Because religious people like it their way. Oh, y'all were shouting good with me earlier. Now. Come on now. <laughs> See, religious people want it their way. But when people begin to really praise God and put it in purpose perspective and put him on the throne, religious people start getting nervous. I, I know ain't no religious people in the house today, so I don't know. You ain't got to get nervous. <laughs> you can say amen. You ain't got to say oh me. Come on. See, see, they realized that, that, that now that, that God was being exalted, that human kingdoms were coming down. And, and, and it was revealed for what they really were. Why? Because God was being restored to his right place. See, the religious crowd fears now in our churches, even across America. As Jesus looked at the faces of these impassioned multitude, waving their branches, shouting, pro, shouting praises unto him, this is what he said calmly. He said, if I could silence these, if they, if they would hold their peace, these rocks would come up up and give them to praise me. Listen, you say rocks? I'm telling you, creation praises God. The Bible, the Bible talks about how creation groans within itself. There's a longing even within creation for the coming of the Lord. Creation praises God. When the water's rushing over the rocks and coming down in the form of a waterfall and you hear that noise, 
that waterfall is doing exactly what it was created to do and is praise unto God. When the trees bear their fruit, they are doing exactly what they were created to do and it's praise unto God. When the birds are chirping and singing their songs, you ought to be reminded that what they're doing, they're doing what they were created to do and it's praise unto God. When the fish are swimming through the sea and all of a sudden they're manifesting themselves and doing what they, it is praise unto God. You know why? Because God spoke them into existence and formed them and fashioned them for a particular purpose and when they're fulfilling that function it is praise unto God the Bible said that God formed man from the dust of the ground and it breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul what was he doing he was ushered in with the presence of God and that man and a man stood up on his feet and became a living soul and man began to praise God listen friend you are cut you're created for a purpose you are fearfully and wonderfully made but you are made for the manifestation of the praise of God listen when you do what you do it brings glory to God when you lift your hands when you clap your hands when you shout your sound when you dance your dance when you leap for joy you are praising and magnifying God see these people these religious people they were no longer did they feel that they would be admired by the people as God's representatives but now another would be and so the power play was on the power play was on as far as they could see, they were coming up losers. So what they want to do, let's just stop the praise. Tell them to stop it. See, that's, that's what people want to do. That's what people try to do because it takes power away from them and it restores it to its rightful places. When God's kingdom is exalted, human kingdoms come down. This is what the Pharisees feared. This is what the religious crowd fears now in our churches across America. Jesus sees these things and he says, listen, the rocks cry out if we don't praise him. Could you imagine a rock praising the king of glory instead of you? Thousands of churches across the world today are celebrating Palm Sunday. But wouldn't you think that there's some that are not even allowing a people praise in their churches? They would be rebuked if they opened their mouth the way some of you did today. They would be told, you can't praise that way. You know, I've, I've told you the story about Shouting John. Can I tell you about Shouting John? Old Shouting John came into this old Methodist church. Shouting John came and sat on the back row. And the people began to pray and uh, sing the songs. And old Shouting John got a little bit loud for them. The dignified folk of that church, they didn't like what Shouting John was saying and how John was acting. So that week they pulled up this long driveway up to Shouting John's house. And there was old Shouting John, 80-some years old, out there plowing in the, few, uh, in the field with a mule. The old dignified folks, they got out of their Cadillac and got John's attention. And John said, whoa, mule. Walked over there where those men were. And old Shouting John began to talk to them. He said, fellas, I know why you came here. You don't want me shouting in your church. You don't want me dancing in your church. You don't want me praising in your church. But let me tell you why I do. Shouting John looked at those dignified folks and said, boys, when you pulled up that long driveway up through those fields, God gave me that. He said, can I tell you, I've not once been to the hospital with one of my children, and I ain't had to go visit somebody in the prison. You know why? Because God's kept my children. He said, look at me, 80-some years old, out here plowing in a field with a mule. He said, you don't understand why I shout the way I shout, but God's been good to me. He said, matter of fact, while I think about it, go ahead and hold my mule. I'm going to shout right now. Listen, friend, some of us got to understand that God's been good to us. And the religious crowd, they're going to tell you, you can't praise God that way. You can't act that way, but I'm telling you, if you knew where God's brought me from. You'd understand why I shout the way I shout. I'm not trying to put on a show for you. I'm not trying to get you excited for me. I want you to know that God's been good to you and you can praise Him because God's brought you through a mighty long way and you ought to magnify the name of the Lord. Too many churches have become too prestigious. Too many churches become too pre prestigious. They're, they're, they're full of society to allow praise to take place. They don't want to deal, listen. And it might be that they just don't want to deal with the attack of the enemy that comes with praising. You see, when you praise God, the enemy's going to try to stop your praise. Some people don't want to deal with the attack. There's churches that, 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 that try to break out of obscurity and into freedom and they see that garrison of the enemy threatening any advances in God and it becomes easy to settle back into a religious gospel. 
See, they put on a good front. They look alive, but they deny the power of God. Second Timothy 3 and 5, they have a form of godliness, but denying its power. And he said, from such people, turn away. As misguided as this group seemed to be, Jesus never rebuked them. And he'll never rebuke you or me for praising him either. Psalm 50, verse 23, he said, Whoso offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct to right, I will show the salvation of God. He said, when you praise me, you're glorifying me. Psalm 92, verse 1, he said, It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. It's good. It's a good thing to do it, folks. There's another scripture that said that praise is comely or acceptable in the house of God. Listen, it's all right to come in and praise. As a matter of fact, nobody's exempt from praising God. Everybody ought to praise God. Psalm 150 tells us, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise God. Come on, babies. Praise is not an option. It's not something to be bartered with. It's not something that you tell God, okay, God, if, if you'll do this for me, then I'll praise you. How about go ahead and praise him because he's able to do it for you. That's what God wants us to see. That's what God wants us to understand. C.H. Spurgeon, a well-renowned early church minister of the gospel, said this, Prayer pulls, down, pulls the rope down below, and the great bell rings above in the ears of God. Some scarcely stir the bell, for they pray so languidly. Others give only an occasional jerk at the rope. But he who communicates with heaven is the man who grasps the rope boldly and pulls continuously with all his might. There's an old song that talks about ring those golden bells. Folks, I'm telling you, the prayers of the saints come up before God as a sweet fragrance, a sweet odor. When you praise Him, it gets the attention of God. Folks, there's sometimes I ain't got a thing to say to Him, and I just go ahead and say, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes I just get to praise the Lord out. You know why? Because my mind is continually on Him. And that's the way it should be. We should be in continual praise and prayer unto God. Paul tells us and exhorts us in the, in, in, in the book, uh, the Colossians, I believe it is, he said that we should always be making melodies and hymns and songs in the Spirit. We should always have these, have these songs of praise in our hearts. God wants you to understand that He doesn't want rocks crying in your place. He created you. Listen, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are uniquely made for the purpose of praising God. That's what God formed you and fashioned you for, to live your life to exalt the name of the Lord. So these people thought they had a reason because they praised God for what they thought they wanted that He was going to be able to give. And even though it might have seemed to us wrong motivated praise, remember what He said in Psalm 50, anytime you praise me, it still brings glory to God. In other words, sinners owe God praise. You might be in here this morning and you might have lived your life like hell this past week. Are you with me? You might have lived through sin and you might have lived your life and abused your, your spiritual walk and you might have just, but I'm telling you, because you're in here, you owe God praise. Amen. Well, well don't I have to make things right? Don't I have to make things? No, listen, even demons fell at the feet of Jesus and declared Him to be the Son of God. Come on now. Jesus stepped out of the boat on the Gadarenes, uh, Gadarene shore, and when he did, the demon, demonic man come and fell at his feet and said, what have we got to do with you, Je Jesus, Son of God? Listen, even the demons fall down and worship him. Don't you think for a moment that you are, uh, are, are exempt from praising God. Nobody is exempt from praising God. And listen, I want to tell you, either you praise him now or you will praise him in the future because every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You can come to church and say, I refuse to sing that. Or I refuse to back up that. I refuse. You can refuse all you want, but there's going to come a day that the power of God is going to be strong. It's going to drop you to your knee, and you're going to open your mouth, and you're going to declare out loud, Jesus Christ is the living God. He's the Son of God. Come on now. Ain't no rock going to shout in my place. Ain't no devil going to steal my praise. Listen, I'm telling you, this is what we need to understand. Is that there's only one kind of person who doesn't praise the Lord. And those are dead people. Physically or spiritually, they're the only kind of people that don't praise the Lord. 
So my encouragement to you this morning, and we're going to pray here in just a moment, my encouragement to you this morning is to put faith in action. Just go ahead and listen. Sometimes you just go ahead and praise Him like it's already done. We spend a lot of time begging God. That gentleman that I was speaking with yesterday, he was talking, you know, the, the fear, the worry of, 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 of prostate cancer. And, I, and, and matter of fact, about 20, I think he told me 23 years ago, his wife passed away from breast cancer. She had a recurrence of it, and she passed away. And so I began to share my story with him about Tracy. I said, you know, I left that doctor's office. My world felt like it was crumbling all down around me. I put my wife out of the house and told her I was going for a ride. And I went to God, and I said, God, don't take my wife from me. And the Lord spoke to me that day and said, I got this, son. I didn't beg God anymore. I didn't plead with God. Matter of fact, my wife would tell you there were times we were praying together as a family and I didn't even ask God to heal her again because he heard me the first time. So I just began to go ahead and praise him because I had his word. Listen, she was still going to the doctor. They were still doing scans. They were still saying, well, we about got it. They were still saying we got to do the surgery. They were still putting her under radiation treatment. But I heard God heard me the day the doctor said it was there. God said, I got this. And so I just began to go ahead and praise him because he had it. What is that, Pastor? That's faith. It's not faith in what the doctor can do. It's not faith in what medical treatments can do. It's faith in what God said he would do. You say, well, you done lost your mind. You're right. I have. I quit thinking for myself. I started thinking on things that are true and honest and lovely and just and of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So I magnify the name of the Lord. When God's given me His Word that He's got it. When God tells me and declares through His Word or through His voice, I've got this thing, folks, I'm telling you, it's at that moment that you begin to praise Him and exalt Him. Just like Abraham and Sarah, they got that Word from God that God was going to give them a son, and they begin to walk their life out in the promise of God. They didn't see anything physical. They didn't see anything emotional. But what they had was a Word from the Lord. Listen, folks, we've been given this book, and it's a book of promises. It's a book of declarations. It's a book of the Word of God. And I'm telling you, you take this book, and you begin to praise Him for what what he's promised in this book and I'm telling you you'll see those promises come to pass because you activate faith in your praise that praise will still glorify God but I'm telling you if you don't believe in what are you praising for you're, you're, you've deceived yourself but when you really believe and it comes from a heart of prayer listen there's some of you and listen I've been in the crowd I know there's some, you, stand, you sit in the crowd and the preacher says, come on, somebody praise the Lord. And you're just like, okay, I'll do it. It's giving God praise, but it's not benefiting you at all. But then there's other people that's like, well, I wasn't even waiting on you, preacher. I'm just going to go ahead and praise him because he's been good. I, I ain't waiting on the preacher to beg me. I ain't waiting on the musician to pray me. I'm, waiting, I'm just going to go ahead and come on and just go ahead and get in the praise party and begin to worship and magnify God. <laughs> See, people that don't praise God, they're dead you put faith in action you begin to praise the Lord and there's a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory that comes as a result it doesn't always change your circumstances but it'll change your outlook it'll change how you see things it'll change how you view your circumstances because you're praising him and you're worshiping him everybody will would you stand across the house Jesus said if they don't praise him, rocks will cry out. Folks, bring the prayer list up, baby. Every one of these folks that are on this list, we've got two pages. But every one of us on this list, we can praise God today because we know God's got this. Every single one of them. We started out this service this morning with prayer, bringing our petitions and our requests and making them known to God. Listen, most of us, when we start our prayer, we just jump right into the list. Let's be honest. Oh, God, I'm coming to you because I got this or I got that or, Lord, I need this or I need that. And, and then at the end, we, we just say, thank you, Lord. And 
Jesus taught us when we should pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Just go ahead and start with praise. Declare his kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then you go into your petition, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and our trespasses. We forgive those who sin and trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What was he saying? He said, I start, I start it with praise and I stop it with praise. I'm going to put all, I'm going to sandwich it in there. All my stuff, all my needs, all my struggles. I'm going to sandwich it between praise. And it just makes it taste so much better. Amen. So I'm not going to ask you to pray about something today. I'm not going to ask you to beg God to do something for you today. I just want you to take a moment as we conclude this service and praise God for something today. Come on, praise God for something today. Come on, praise God like it's already done. If God has given you an assurance in His Word, just go ahead and declare it done. Praise Him in faith. Praise Him like it's already done. God's giving you answers. God's giving you His Word. God's going to turn it around. God's going to heal. God's going to deliver. God's going to save. God's going to make whole. My Lord, praise Him for His great things He's done. Praise Him for the 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 great things He's done. Hey! You've been so good to me. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. So good to me. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. Kelsey said it earlier, the praise is a weapon. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. I praise you, God, because our loved ones are going to be saved. I praise you, God, because drug addicts are going to be delivered. I praise you, God, because you're going to take away the taste of alcohol. I praise you, God, because homes are going to be made whole. I praise you, God, because you're going to make it right for my kids. God, you're going to turn it around for the glory of God. 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 I, I just want to testify with the praise report. And it might not sound like a praise report in and of itself. The other night, Tracy and I were coming home, and Kelsey called us from school. She had called her mom on her phone to tell her mom she was really hurting, and a lot of pains were shooting in her body. So I got on my phone, because I got a speaker in my truck, and I got on my phone, and I told Tracy, I said, tell Kelsey to answer the phone. So she answered the phone. She said, what's up, Daddy? I said, I said, baby, the other Sunday morning, God spoke to me and told me to pray over Tabitha with the pain she'd been having in her head. And God told me to tell her it's not physical, it's emotional. She began to testify to me over the next many days that there was no more pain. And God began to do the work. So I began to talk to Kelsey and I said, baby, I want to tell you, I feel led to pray the same way over you. So we're going to pray and I want you to receive it. Because I believe it was a spiritual attack. I believe God's attacking the leadership in our church. He's attacked Kelsey with physical things. He's attacked Beth with physical things. 
all in this last week or so. You know why? Because things are turning around in the church and the, the devil don't want that. So we begin to pray. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost began to witness through Tracy and myself right there in the truck as we were praying. And, and we just begin to magnify God. We just begin to pray. Listen, I'm thankful when I don't know what I ought to pray, the Holy Ghost intercedes with groaners and others that cannot be understood. We felt the presence of God as we begin to pray for her. But here's what some people would say, well, that's not really a praise report. While we were praying and feeling the presence of God, the attack on Kelsey physically intensified. So you know what that told me? I was praying in the right direction. That let me know the devil didn't want me praying that way. Let me tell you something. When the heat gets turned up, you keep on pressing. When the devil starts trying to rend down and fight even stronger, you better remind yourself whose authority you're under. You're not under your authority, the church authority, but you're the only authority with the keys of the kingdom of heaven that you can bind and you can loose. And whatever we ask on earth, it'll be done in heaven. God will step in your behalf and begin to minister in a mighty way. Preacher, I just don't believe all that. Listen, Jesus came to a demoniac boy and commanded that demon to come out of the boy. Guess what the demon did? The demon grabbed him and caused him to fall on the ground and begin to foam in the mouth and carry on at the rebuke of Jesus. But Jesus didn't get all tore out the frame. And, 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 and listen, he made his command clear. You're coming out. The boy was delivered. Why? Because Jesus didn't start begging and pleading and saying, didn't you hear me? No. He made it clear and he knew what authority rested on him. And when he called it done, it was done. The devil, listen, he ain't gonna, you ain't going to say, devil, leave me alone. He said, okay, I won't bother you today. No! He's going to test you every way he can. That's why you keep on praising. That's why you keep on exalting. That's why you keep on magnifying the name of the Lord. And watch God bring you through. Amen? Amen. Listen, I, I know, I, I thank God. I thank God for the turnaround. I thank God for the blessing. I thank God how He is manifesting His presence, His glory. I thank God for what we are experiencing and feeling around this house. But I'm telling you something. You get ready for warfare. You get ready for warfare. How do I fight it? I just keep on praising. God shows up and fights for me. God shows up and heals me. God shows up and delivers. God shows up and rebukes the devil. God shows up and casts the devil out. God will do whatever God needs to do when you see the manifestation of His presence. God will do it. God will do it. We're getting ready to go home, but before we do, listen, would you just go ahead and give God one more good shout of praise? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, lily of the valley, the good shepherd, the I am. I'm telling you, whatever you need, he is. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Come on, clap your hands, all your people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, magnify the name of the Lord with me.
I long for your praise. Did I not tell you in my word that I looked down from heaven to see if there were any that understand that did seek me? God said that he's a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God desires your praise. God desires your worship. God longs for that fellowship and relationship and praise and adoration unto Him. God desires you to magnify His name. God longs to fill you with His presence. Just like the trumpeters and the singers and chronicles begin to praise and magnify God, the Bible said that the presence of God filled the house so greatly that the priest did not have a place to minister. They fell on their face before God. God longs. To manifest His presence, His glory in our midst. God longs to do the great and wonderful things that we ask Him to do. God longs to be high and lifted up. God longs to allow His train to fill the temple. God wants His glory to be revealed in us. Not just within the house, but within the world. That we can let our light shine. That the people may see our light and they may glorify our Father and the good works that He does through us. Father, forgive us for times we did not praise You like we should. Forgive us for not giving You our best when You gave us Yours. Forgive us, O God, for times that we did not praise You. We came in obstinate and hard-hearted. Forgive us, O God. Father, let us be people of praise. Let us be people of praise. Let us be people that magnify your name. Let us be people that worship you and honor you. God, we love you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. Come on, all across the sanctuary, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. All across the sanctuary, lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. In spirit and in truth, God, you seek such to worship you. You seek such to praise your name. We honor you in this house today. We honor you in this house today. Look down on us, God. Help us to understand that you're looking for those that seek you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on, baby. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Everybody singing praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. One more time singing praise. Name of, come on, worship Him. Sing it. Oh, I praise Your name. Name of Jesus, He's my rock, He's my fortress, He's my deliverer, in Him 
will I trust? Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. God is good. Come on, God is good. All the time. Praise the name of the Lord. Love on him. Love on one another. I look forward to seeing you this evening. Please don't forget the offering for Sister Rhonda. Drop it in the box, and we're going to bless her today. Also, please be much in prayer for my service.